Just take a moment to pause the video and reread the question first before listening on. In part A, we are asked to find the direction and magnitude of a magnetic field at point P. And before we can calculate that, we need to figure out the directions of the two magnetic fields. Wire number one, which we may call the one moving along the x-axis, and wire number two, which we may call as the one moving along the y-axis, they're both carrying currents and therefore they will both produce magnetic fields. Let's begin with wire number one and try to determine the direction of the magnetic field. We will do that by obeying the right hand rule. So what we're going to do is grasp the wire with our right hand and we're going to make sure that we point our thumb in the direction of the current. It would look something like the following. So this is an attempt at drawing a right hand and notice the thumb again is pointing to the right in the direction of this current. And we can see hopefully that our four fingers as we grasp the wire would be curling out of the computer screen. So this is going to mean that the magnetic field will also be pointing out of the computer screen because remember your fingers will point in the direction of the field. So the fingers curl outward of the computer screen therefore the magnetic field will be pointing outward. Let's make a note on the side that B1 will be out of the page. Moving on to the other wire, which was running along the y-axis, we will call that wire number two. We're going to again grasp it with our right hand, placing our fingers at point P. And so there we have it, the right hand grasping wire number two, the thumb again pointing in the direction of the current. This time the four fingers of our hand as they contact point P are facing into the computer screen. So this will mean that B2, the magnetic field produced by wire 2, will be into the page. Now, typically, out of the page is considered a positive direction and into the page is considered negative. Therefore, B1 will be positive and B2 will be negative. Now what we need to do, because we've already figured out the directions, is to figure out the magnitude. And that's where this formula comes in. We can see the magnetic field of each wire will be equal to a constant multiplied by the current within the wire, divided by 2 pi times the distance to the point. So, for example, starting with wire number 1, which was the one running along the x-axis, we would have the constant mu times i1 divided by 2 pi times r1. Now the constant has a value right here. It's equivalent to 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 tesla meters per amp. And then we're going to multiply that by I1, which is the current running through wire 1. We can see that that's 5 amps. And then we'll divide this by 2 pi times the distance from wire number 1 to the point. Now that distance is 40 centimeters, but remember we need that distance in meters. So you can do 40 times 10 to the negative 2, and that will convert it into meters. Let's punch this into our calculator we end up with a magnetic field of 2.5 times 10 to the minus 6 Tesla. Remember that B1 was positive, so we will leave this as a positive value. Let's set up B2 in a similar manner. We're going to take the constant 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7, multiply that by the current running through wire 2, which was 3 amps, divide this by 2 pi times the distance from wire number one to the point. In this case, it's 30 centimeters. So converting it into meters, we will have 30 times 10 to the minus two meters. And when we compute this, we can see that B2 is two times 10 to the minus six Tesla. Remember, B2 was into the page and it was negative. So we'll assign a negative to it. The total magnetic field, which we may just call B total, will equal the sum of these two magnetic fields so again, B1 was the positive 2.5 times 10 to the minus 6 Tesla, and we will add that to B2, which is negative 2 times 10 to the minus 6 Tesla. And when you process this on your calculator, you should end up with a total magnetic field equal to 5 times 10 to the minus 7 Tesla. Notice it's positive, and because it came out positive, that means the direction will be out of the page. And also, if you need to convert that into micro Tesla, then all you need to remember 
is that one micro Tesla is equivalent to 10 to the minus six Tesla. So when you multiply by that conversion factor, these Tesla will cancel and you would be left with 0.5 micro Tesla. So that would be an equivalent answer as well. And again, the direction is out of the page. So that completes part A of this question. Let's head back up to see what's going on in part B. Part B, we are asked to find the magnetic field at a point 30 centimeters above the point of intersection. So the point of intersection of the wires is right here, but now we're going to explore a magnetic field that's actually hovering 30 centimeters above that point. So again, we need to figure out the directions here first. It's a little bit tricky because it's, it's three-dimensional. The magnetic field is actually lying uh, above the computer screen. So we have grasped wire number one again with our right hand. We've pointed our thumb to the right in the direction of the current. We can see that our fingers at the point of intersection would be curling downward. So this means that B1 in this case will be pointing downward. So we're just going to draw B1 in this direction. Let's take a look at B2. So now we're grasping wire number two with our right hand. Our thumb is pointing in the direction of the current, so it's pointing upward. In this case, at the point of intersection of the wires, our fingers are curling to the right. So this means that B2, the magnetic field produced by wire number two, will be pointing to the right in this direction here. So we have figured out the directions and remember that we're 30 centimeters above this point of intersection. So you have to imagine a point, it is located right here, but it's floating towards you above your computer screen, 30 centimeters. And so the distance for each wire, wire number one and wire number two will be the 30 centimeters. So we can say R1 is the same as R2, which is 30 centimeters. Let's just multiply it by 10 to the minus two to get it into meters. So we'll use the equation now to calculate the magnitude of these magnetic fields. B1 is going to be the constant multiplied by the current in wire number one, which we recall was five amps, and then divided by two pi times the distance of 30 times 10 to the minus two. Let's set up B2 as well and then we'll compute them. And so when we punch these into our calculators we will see that B1 is 3.33 times 10 to the minus 6 Tesla and B2 is 2 times 10 to the minus 6 Tesla. Now to get the overall magnitude what we're going to do is take our vectors and align them correctly. Right now they are tail to tail. We want them tip to tail. So you can do this in a couple different ways, but one way would be to slide B1 over to here. That way they're aligned tip to tail, and then your resultant will be this right here. This is gonna be the magnitude of the magnetic field. We can see from Pythagorean theorem that B squared, which is the hypotenuse of our right triangle here, is equal to B1 squared plus B2 squared, if we square root both sides of this equation, we can see that the magnitude of the magnetic field will equal the square root of B1 squared plus B2 squared. So let's fill this value in for B1 and this value in for B2. So when you plug those values in and crunch it down on your calculator, you're going to get 3.8 8 roughly times 10 to the minus 6 Tesla. That's going to be the magnitude of the magnetic field. Again, if you need it in micro Tesla, just do the following conversion. 1 micro Tesla is equivalent to 10 to the minus 6 Tesla. Setting it up in this manner actually cancels the 10 to the minus 6 Teslas, leaving us with micro Tesla. So the magnitude would be 3.88 micro Tesla. As for the direction, we return back to the diagram. And remember that the magnetic field is actually not exactly where we have drawn it because it's lying above the computer screen. It's actually pointing, or I should say it lies along the positive x-axis. So 30 centimeters above the point of intersection would actually be right here. This was the 30 centimeters. B2 again was pointing this way and B1 was pointing straight down. So try to imagine taking our diagram and sort of lifting it off the computer screen and that'll give you a better sense of really where the overall magnetic field lies. Nevertheless, we can still figure out the direction 
by basically locating this angle right here. Now, if you look at that angle, then you would have the opposite side marked right here, which is the B1. And then you have the adjacent side right here, which is B2. So opposite and adjacent call to mind the tangent function. So tangent of theta is equal to the opposite B1 over the adjacent B2. The actual angle will be the inverse tangent of B1 over B2. So we're going to be taking our value for B1 and B2 and plugging them in here. Let's just clear a little bit of space here to get the angle. So it's going to be the inverse tangent of our B1, which was the 3.33 times 10 to the minus 6 Tesla, divided by B2, which remember was 2 times 10 to the minus 6 Tesla. You can actually cancel the 10 to the negative 6 and the Tesla. So you're doing the inverse tangent of 3.33 divided by 2, and you're going to get about 59 degrees. Now, if your homework system wants this angle measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, then we need to be careful about that. So one more drawing here. So to get the direction counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, let's recall that B2 was pointing this way and B1 was pointing that way. We drew the resultant right here. We figured out that this was 59 degrees, but the angle that your homework system might want is actually this angle. This is counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So basically, you're just going to have to subtract 59 degrees from 360. So if we do that, we are going to get 301 degrees as the final angle. And again, that's going to be counterclockwise from the positive x-axis.